Hey, it's Andrew Clavin. Has it ever occurred to you that if I'm in hell doing these videos where I have to watch crazy leftists on TikTok and you're enjoying watching these videos, there's something wrong with you that you should get help? One way you can get help is by going to genucell.com. There are sponsors for this video. Go to genucell.com slash ClavenYT and get a free spa box with two luxury skincare essentials and free shipping. So today, I think we're going to be looking at communists uh, who just haven't got the good word that communism doesn't work. They have they've had over 100 years, but still, you know, it's just not getting through. So we're going to watch them on TikTok selling their brilliant philosophy. Let's see the first one. Communism is bad. The people who told you that thought segregation is good. <laughs> communism is evil. What is communism? Dictators and bread lines and gulags? Where did you hear that? Uh, just read the Gulag Archipelago by Solzhenitsyn. His wife even admitted it was pure fiction. Read the big black book of communism. Even the author of that book admitted it was fiction. There was also a famine. It's true, there was a famine, and yet I don't see how that's any worse than the many more famines that have happened under capitalism. Name one. The Bengal Famine of 1943, the Great Indian Famine of 1876 to 1878, all caused by the first imperial capitalist superpower. Okay, first of all, the hair is a giveaway. <laughs> I mean, I mean, a person who can think clearly does not have that hair. That hair is a result of thinking that communism is good. If you think communism is good, you will have that hair. That hair will it just grow, it'll just spring out of just to get away from your brain. It'll just be escaping from your brain. And that's what your hair will look like if you think that communism is good. And just one little note, capitalism has come as close to eliminating poverty all over the world as anything. It has almost eliminated poverty because of free trade and capitalism. It raises all ships. It did not cause the famines. Those famines were caused by communism. However, I don't have to tell you that because you just know by looking at the guy's hair. All right, let's see another one. Communism has always existed and will always exist. And if you're so woefully misinformed that you believe that Marx invented communism, please go and read a mother book. Communism is both a new and old ideology because it's continually being developed over time. We look back on past events and critically analyze them so that we don't make the same mistakes again. <laughs> Communism is also the oldest form of social organization. In anthropology, it's well accepted that people lived in egalitarian societies for hundreds of thousands of years. <laughs> well, first of all, there's only been, there is only one egalitarian society on earth, and that is a graveyard. And it's, it's not even on earth, it's under the earth. That is where everybody is equal because equality is death. And the other thing is almost everything that woman said would be true of sadism too. You say, well, do you think sadism was invented by the Marquis de Sade? You're just ignorant. There's always been sadism, but we work to get sadism right. It may in the, in the old days, it may have caused people to harm each other and kill each other, but now we're managing to keep some people alive after we've killed them and hurt them. Uh, so sadism is a one, we're all sadists at heart. It's all true of sadism too. It's a crummy philosophy. It just doesn't work. It's never worked. It makes everything worse. Everywhere they try it. Oh my goodness, at least her hair was better. All right, let's watch it. Whenever you talk about socialism, people always want to bring up all the poor socialist nations. You know, the ones trying to recover from being bombed, sanctioned, having their resources extracted, and labor exploited. And then make you compare them to the capitalist countries who got rich doing those things to them. Huh? <laughs> when, was, when did we ever bomb the Soviet Union or China? Never. Look, the guy looks like a girl. Are you gonna, I mean, Come on. It's all about the hair. This thing is, is all about hair. You know, the thing about communism is it mucks up your hair. And, you know, look at, look at me. If you want hair like this, <laughs> you've got to be a capitalist. Because, you see, the thing with my hair is it, it doesn't even have to escape my head because I'm a capitalist, so it doesn't have to run away from my brain. These people are out of their minds. I've just, you know, the thing about it is if all you have to do is read a couple of books— but what they do is they read like an article here and a website there, and that's what they figure out. All right, there's more. I, I, you know, why, why are you doing this to me? Why do you enjoy watching me suffer like this? I think you really should talk to your uh, therapist about that. All right, more.
That was actually realistic, right? Communism, you have to share a toothbrush. You can't uh, lift weights without some guy bugging you, and you have to spit in other people's faces. So that was actually very accurate. Whether you have three minutes in the morning or 30 minutes with GenuCell, you can keep your face wrinkle-free. Not sure which product is for you? A great place to start is their Gen 90, the new instant wrinkle treatment from GenuCell. Gen 90 instantly reduces wrinkles anywhere you use it, around the eyes, laugh lines, and even chin. It starts working in seconds. You'll never worry about your skin or your confidence again. GenuCell's technology is luxurious, nourishing, silky smooth. There's a reason why GenuCell has 400 times the customer loyalty of other skincare brands, and it just gets better. GenuCell's XV is a collagen builder, moisturizer, with vitamin C and hyaluronic acid in a pure natural base for stunning results day after day. Right now, both Gen 90 and XV are included in their best-selling package on sale now. Make your fine lines and wrinkles disappear wherever they are before you even leave the house. Order right now at genucell.com slash ClavenYT and get a free spa box with two luxury skincare essentials and free shipping. Hurry before they sell out at genucell.com slash ClavenYT. Marxists and socialists do not want to abolish the family. That's never been a thing. And I know this might come as a shock, but Ben Shapiro has actually been lying about this issue. And if you want to know the actual Marxist position on the family unit, you should read Friedrich Engels' The Origins of the Family, Private Property, and the State. Or watch this video we just did talking about it. In this book, Engels traces how the family unit has changed and morphed throughout history, and how that relates to changes in the economic system or the mode of production. He says that the family unit under capitalism is a form of monogamy that's highly coercive to women, that saddles them with doing all the domestic labor and forces them into marriages with people who are financially stable and have enough money to support them. Whereas under socialism, that economic coercion will go away and relationships will actually be based on love. In no way does he say that family should be abolished. He does say that the raising of children may become more social once we have things like free universal daycare for everyone. But that's not abolishing the relationship between parent and child. It's alleviating domestic. Ah, meeting, alleviating domestic. I'm recording this on International Women's Day, which is also the anniversary of the Russian Revolution, because, in fact, Engels and Marx knew that they had to get women out of the domestic sphere, sphere which is their dominion uh, and their joy and their great contribution and their unique contribution if they were going to take over the means of production. What can I say? The guy... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad these guys have read a book, but you have to read a couple of books with different points of view in them. But uh, anything that attacks Ben Shapiro is good with me because I just I just want to get that guy. Imagine leaving this comment while living in the United States. 14 million indigenous people died when the United States was colonized. And following that horrendous genocide, which I would argue is still occurring against indigenous people here, the Declaration of Independence was written, and it was written based on the ideas of Adam Smith, who was considered the founding father of capitalism. And as if that wasn't enough, we went ahead and did this in other places too, all in the name of capitalism. In Hawaii alone, 84% of indigenous Hawaiians were murdered. So white people could go there and keep doing capitalism. There is no excuse for egregious human rights violations that happen by any government or any state. I'm not a Stalinist. I'm not a hanky, okay? But communists don't even claim that guy. What he did was But saying this as though communism is the reason people die in a country where 900,000 people die from capitalism currently every year? <laughs> I like the fact that they're taking these pictures, uh, these videos on an iPhone in the, their cars with jewelry on, all of which is manufactured by capitalism. You know, these these innovations come out of America all the time because we're free. You know, things like things like fracking, things like uh, you know, uh, iPhones are all invented. Why are they all invented here? I wonder. So why are they all invented here? Like I'm just just trying to think what it might be. What is the connection between inventions like the light bulb and the car and the things like that? Why are they all invented in the West? I can't figure it out. What else you got? Yeah, I dated a communist once. I had no idea. It didn't go well, though. Yeah, I should have noticed all the red flags. <laughs> all right. So sometimes capitals have bad hair, too. I admit it. Now, go see a, a therapist so you stop watching videos where I'm tormented by watching these videos. And maybe I'll do the same thing so I don't have to watch these videos. And we'll all just be have mental health and we'll all be equal and it will be a, a communist paradise. Fat chance.
If you too would like to live in a socialist hell, like and subscribe, and also subscribe to The Andrew Klavan Show wherever you get your podcasts.